thank you all for coming. Glad you're here. Um, and yeah, I could sit. Can you, can you okay. <laughs> Jane could move up a little. I could. No, no, she can't see it. Which Jane? This Jane or this Jane? <laughs> well, I just repeat it so I don't have to peer around. It's Tracy. almost harder like, with less like people thing there. One thing too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, we are talking about how to be a good creature by Simon Montgomery, and she is a naturalist, and she's written over 30 books for adults and for children, um, and so her job basically is to travel all around the world to study animals and write about them. She does some films, too. How many think that would be... Would, it, would that be anybody's ideal job? Is that something anybody would do? I, mean, <laughs> I think for a little while it'd be fun. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think so. I, yeah. I could touch all those animals. Mm -hmm. You could touch them all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, in, the, in our house, if there's a spider, it, I'm the one that catches the spider. He <laughs> takes it outside. <laughs> it we have our little spider cup and a piece of paper. <laughs> And we go over and there, and was like, like get it away from me. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I don't like are those uh, millipedes. So oh, those creep me out. Those creep That's me out. way too many legs. Yes. Yeah. But when he still gets in the spider cup and a little piece of paper. Yes, right. Yes, I heard it. Catch <laughs> yeah, I would do that. <laughs> what do we think we learned? How, how do you be a good creature? I, you know, I don't know that I learn a lot because I think if you have that sort of, if you have that mentality that that all things are valuable and and you're curious and um, you don't like killing things, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I'm still a good creature to other creatures. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a good creature to humans. That's the problem <laughs> always. But um, I don't know that I learned a lot from it really it was just some interesting you know things i really liked learning about the the it was new, new, new zealand or australian animals they had never heard of or mm -hmm. is that no is yeah. that where she was or was it a different country? There, there was a there was a south american one too a central one that i right. never heard okay. of. she was me, doing the tree kangaroo let me get my nose that one? Mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. when she was yeah. the tree kangaroos and stuff yeah, yeah. Oh. Karen's on the move. <laughs> yeah, she is. I finally got the audio to work. My oh. husband got the audio to work. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm out of practice. Yeah. Well, Papua New Guinea, that's where she was. I, I, I was really intrigued by the animals she was talking about from Papua New Guinea. The Machis tree kangaroo and long beaked kaita? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the mountain cuscus, -cus. yeah. Yeah, I never heard of like Dr. Seuss animals. I know they did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they sure did. I saw that too. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she's had a great life traveling and seeing all those creatures. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. The hand I raised here. I I actually was um, disappointed in the title i thought it was misleading because i yeah. thought i was going to have lessons from these creatures and she never did that she just every chapter yeah. was about her interactions with these animals and that was interesting that was fascinating but i kept thinking okay i how to be a good creature and that that means i'm going to have lessons i'm going to have some you know information about that and she never right. gave me that so i was i just kept I was a little perturbed that she titled it that. If it had just been a memoir, I would have been a little more at ease with the title. Yeah, I think that's what I meant by not learning anything. That it didn't seem like there was insight that I thought would would be there. But um, so, do you feel you learn more about the the animals or about the author? I think she her as a memoir. She was saying what she learned. 
in terms of how to be and 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 how it changed her life. Um, I don't think I do. Th I agree with you about the title, though. I wasn't, you know, I don't think it was a great title, but I do think she she shared her own personal um, story, which I thought was heartbreaking. Actually, I mean, she'd been abused as an infant, and I mean, I really walked locked onto that as you know she kind of lost the thread of that kind of later in the later chapters it kind of petered out but early on you know her early life was really strange whether it had been her own mother or whether it had been the babysitter the caretaker when she was very little in germany but she ended up you know with having maybe shaken baby syndrome and she she was ill and then her this this the scott Scotch Terrier that was her, Molly, was it Molly? I can't remember. Her first time. I mean, yeah. that was, was also heartbreaking. And I, I known people who grew up in military families. I mean, that's a rough life, you know, often for a child. So um, I, I just kind of thought she started to go there and then she let go of that, whether the editor said enough. You know, let's just tell the animal stories and have a happy ending or what. But I kind of, you know, was I I was sort of taken with her um, with her personal story. So well maybe that's well, maybe that's the lesson that the an that animals could save you. That's right. Mm. Well, See, yeah, that's what I got out of it. That that's what I thought. The animals saved her in her situation. That's you know, but I didn't, I agree with Anne. I didn't think the title fit it at all. I kept waiting to find out more about how yeah. to communicate. Right. I did think if you have a pet or you've had a pet, I think you maybe got more out of it just because you've had that connection with an animal and you've really, if you've had a good experience, I think that that was, uh, that was the lesson that I got out of the whole thing. You know, Jamie mentioned her life was a little strange, you know, some of the things, well, I thought she was a little strange, definitely different and curious. I agree with Jane, very, you know, that really stood out, her curiosity. And, um, and it was interesting that the animals wanted to interact with her too, you know? Um, so it, it, was, it was different. <laughs> I, I think she... <clears throat> Oh, go ahead, whoever that was. It was Karen. I think she married the exact right man. Oh, I do too, Karen. Well, in this whole thing, because not many others could. You know, not many people could live the life that she had chosen to live. And, and there's something about this chosen life that made her parents ali totally alienated from her. Because didn't she say that they disowned her at one point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet she went back to them when they were ill. I, I was... I was a little confused by some of that also, actually. But I mean, she was so in love with these animals that you, you'd have to be the right guy to buy into this. <laughs> well, remember, it was <laughs> Howard that brought the piglet home first. It was his fault. He kind of started the whole thing, I think, so. <laughs> I agree with you totally, Karen, that she found the right guy. <laughs> she found the right guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we don't have a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Too well, much information. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking, I never once took this as about animals. Um, I assumed it was um, how to be a good creature refers to her as a person, to yeah. us as humans, that animals have a lot to teach us mm -hmm. and that we have many of the same characteristics and the same traits and the same abilities. You have to just be open to seeing them slightly differently this reminded me a lot of the, the, the things that are being written lately about trees, for instance, The Secret Life of Trees or whatever that yeah. book was called. Um, and, you know, I don't like anthropomorphizing and I had some issues with the tree book, but I think what we're seeing is that uh, maybe we're trying to enlarge our incredibly human centric vision of the world. And I think that's what she's working with here that, um, that how to be a good creature is aimed at her and at us who read it and not at the, the animals are who they are. They're neither good nor bad. They simply are. 
And we could learn a lot from that. They have perseverance, they have tenacity, they have um, a lot of it is not necessarily chosen, a lot of it's innate, but um, I, I just, I think, I was not especially fond of the writing. I, there's a lot of interesting things in here that I, I just, I don't know. I, I wasn't thrilled about the book, but I thought some of the things that she was speaking of um, could allow us to be more open to the experiences of all kinds of creatures around us, whether or not they're that millipede I don't like. Maybe I need to study a millipede and come to terms with it. But it's just, um, I, th I thought it was an interesting memoir mm -hmm. and i think it's about her and not about the animals and um you know i think that's yeah yeah i i had forgotten um a little bit that she had been abused as a child and to me that is a there's a real direct tie between people who have been through rough things like that and then how they feel about other creatures i think that's part of that caring thing. I know how bad life can be. I'm not going to let life be bad for you. I'm going to, you know, treat you kindly the way I was not treated. Um, so she had this empathy for mm -hmm. animals. Right, Jamie. Was, was anybody else um, kind of astounded with the depth of her um, sadness at the loss of her dog and how suicidal she became? But she went really into depth about that. I mean, that was an, a breathtakingly unusual chapter, I thought, when she was talking about that, 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 that there was just no point in going on. I mean, here she had a husband and all these other animals, right. but she was so bereft over the loss of this one dog. Yeah, that, that, you know, that, that there was something, there was some, something, some piece missing there, some, some broken piece in her heart and the rest of the animals that came after, well, she lost the pig, the pig and the dog in one year. And that yeah, just yeah. did her, that just did her in. Those creatures were her family, were her children. And um, I understand that pain. I I've, I've, haven't had my own children and I've loved my pets that I've lost, but Suicide never came into it for me. I grieved, you but you might have brought up other it, it was a little light. She didn't realize was deep down still in there, you know, and it surfaced the loss of her connection with her parents uh, or whatever. And it might have been kind of a big whammy there. Go yeah, ahead, whatever. Jamie. It was well, a little I, odd to me that in that chapter, I, I agree, Jamie, that it, it was an astounding chapter where she is suicidal. Yeah. And then the next minute, that then the next minute she's in this, you know, camp on the top of the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> which I thought something wasn't connected. If you're that depressed, you're probably not going to be material. If, you're not going to have the fortitude to go do this wilderness camping trip with in, in, in a jungle. So that... Something seemed missing there in the whole story. Or, or she's saying that this is what we need to get ourselves out of that, that we need to yeah, reconnect which, with nature which or I, whatever. Right. I, I can accept that, that that's what kind of jump started her again. Yeah. But something was, it, it seemed. I feel bad I don't for know, her husband having to read that chapter, <laughs> didn't you? I felt bad for him. I was reading and thinking, like, what does he think of that? You know, of how bereft she was and saying, there's no love in my life like these. You know, I have nobody's ever going to love me like that, or I will never feel loved like that again. You know, and here she's been with this man for all that. I mean, I, but, and she never, I would have liked to have had him write a chapter to answer that. <laughs> uh, I've read books like that where the, you know, it goes back and forth in the points of view. So that, that's always intriguing. So which of, we've, we've touched on this a little bit, but which of her stories stuck with you or touched you the most? <laughs> yeah. I, I like the Papua New Guinea chapter with all those interesting animals. I thought that was really fun. I like the emus. Just, the emus. I, I, 
<laughs> I think I just like emus, you know? I just, I thought it was really, really interesting. I could, for some reason, more than some of the other chapters, I could actually picture it. She put me right there, uh, standing, standing there and watching these, these three emus. So that's, that's the part I liked, yeah. But I didn't I care for the book all that much. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun to meet an I, octopus? Yeah, yeah, I want to meet an octopus after hearing well, the stories. You've seen the documentary, My Octopus Teacher. Have you all seen that? Yeah. Fa uh, fabulous, fabulous. Watch, go watch that documentary. It's really amazing, the thing about the octopus. Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> Was anyone else just really surprised when they mentioned in the aquarium how that one octopus died and then they needed another one right away and they caught it in the wild? Yeah, and then they were surprised that it was shy, mm -hmm. and I kept saying, "What's wrong surprised? with you people? Yes, right. How can you be surprised <laughs> that this wild animal is now not happy?" Yeah, I was surprised that they did that. She talked about how they had babies in the back in barrels and yeah, was waiting to be the educational animal. I don't object to educational animals, but I was surprised that they couldn't wait for one of those to come along. They had to go catch a wild one and put it in the tank. Well, I know it's money octopus are popular but mm -hmm. i i was surprised at that and she didn't seem to bat an eye mm -hmm. i mean she she kept trying to meet the new one i mm -hmm. i thought that's yeah, forced yeah. and um against a lot of what she herself was advocating i thought um which is which are that animals are um yeah are, are just where we see empathy more, yeah um i i was surprised at that but i did like the emus i really like the emus <laughs> the best <laughs> <laughs> Jen, were you trying to get something in, say something here? Well, um, I, I was glad that this was exactly the size book that it was. It was worth <laughs> this much effort to me. If you would, if she had gone on waxed, you know, again and again and again, I, I would have overdosed on it. But this much of a thought to me was fine. Then I was done. <laughs> I, and I think that's the writing style as well as and, and and the emotions well like we've talked about they really seem to have the, the highs and, the, and there's just a lot in a small story and I'm not sure that her writing style supports it it's much more expository writing and and so you know just so I'm not well, sure plus, those plus high Jane, level of emotions yeah plus the illustrations I mean they didn't mm -hmm. have, it, that was that was like child book stuff to me the illustrations mm -hmm. and then the writing was meant for adults is kind of you know that that was kind of a odd juxtaposition to me and not and not supporting the depth of emotions that she right. at times was sharing with us so i think it is difficult but I, I do think it was an interesting take on a memoir in her life um i don't know it, i no, go ahead. I, I was also surprised at the amount of time that she implied she spent playing with her animals, with her dogs, particularly. I mean, she said it was, they would, she would spend hours each day playing an exercise with her dogs. I thought, wow, how does <laughs> the husband must be in there cooking and cleaning <laughs> and chopping? And I mean, that, that was surprising to me how much time she devoted to that, too. Mm -hmm. Janet, were you trying to say something? A couple thoughts. One is I'm, I'm starting to feel like a broken record because I'll say about this book, what I've said in past conversations, which is this is a book I never would have picked up to read for a variety of reasons. And yet I found it, I think with Karen mm -hmm. about, you know, about the right length, I thought it was pretty charming. I wasn't really looking for it to be anything more than that. Um, I, I agree with Anne. I think I was looking at in the first couple chapters for, and the moral of this particular story is <laughs> that, you know, an octopus is a good creature because, or, so I, I had that early on as well. I do think I related the most to the octopus chapter because of tying on to what Linda said, which is I'd seen, um is it called oh my octopus my octopus teacher which is absolutely a phenomenal documentary i mean it really is and i think because it's 
we see the building of the entire relationship in that. So it's not as anecdotal as this is in so many cases. You know, it's um, so as I was reading this book, and you know, full disclaimer, I've never had a pet. I've never had a pet in my whole life. And so I'm not looking at it from the perspective of a dog owner or a cat owner or a pig owner or an emu owner, you know, and so, <laughs> so for me, just the, that, that there are people like her who are so much more in love with animals than with humans is something foreign to my personal experience. Even my friends who have pets are more attached to their families than to their pets. So. <laughs> No, I, I'm, I'm glad I read it. I thought it was a charming book. I, I found her experiences interesting. And I, I, I'll say in closing that I do think one of the values of being in a book club is you read books that you wouldn't necessarily select on your own. I want to know if Todd read it. I did. I read it in, I read it in about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it reads pretty fast. But Tracy, I was going to ask you a question about um, does this gal go out and give talks and things like this? So she does so she does present a lot of her work, right? So yeah, she can't yeah. be she can't be completely um, scared of human being of humans, you know. So in spite of all this talk about, you know, anthropomorphizing animals and so on and so forth. I mean, this woman's a scientist in some respects. And so consequently, she um, obviously has decided to adopt animals to study. And so she spends a lot of time with them. I mean, ha having a dog for years and years and years, I could easily spend two hours with my dog walking around and tiring him out. So then he, he won't bother me at night and that sort of thing. So <laughs> I'm just curious to uh, see, not ever hurt I had never heard of this woman until I read this book. And as Janet said, I wouldn't have read this book. I mean, this is a part of a book club that I like is that I wouldn't have picked, ever picked this book up. Um, but in reading it, you see that there is a little bit of um, underneath all this, there's, there's the science part of it about how she describes how the octopus is touching her hands and so on and so forth. When I was in Hawaii, octopus, you could, reach down in the water and pick up an octopus. It was that easy at that point. And it's a scary thing to have these suctions all over your arms and so on and so forth. So that part was, was interesting. And how she described that is exactly how I felt when we had that sort of thing. So, so my, my question is, does she go out and give sort of um, scientific talks or talks to groups of people and so on and so forth in addition to all the books that she's written. Do you know that? I, I never looked her up, so I don't really know. Yeah, it, it does look like she does. And there's, you know, if you even if you go on YouTube or other video sites, there's a number of her presentations that have been okay. recorded. Okay. Okay, good. So yes, Jane, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're gonna say. Okay. Except that you oh. wouldn't have read it. If it hadn't been for the book launch. That's yeah. good. So she, she obviously was a dog person. I was very disappointed she didn't seem to be a cat person as well. So those <laughs> of us that love cats, you know, we're just feeling a little left out here. So yeah, yeah. Again. <laughs> um, among us, is there anybody that feels they've learned something or attached to an animal that wasn't a typical pet, not a cat, not a dog, but has anyone had a, hmm. some good experiences with a non-traditional pet or animal so good experiences <laughs> anybody walk their ferret every morning in the woods <laughs> so i my ex-wife this is not this is not why we're no longer married but i'll tell you this when we were in, when we were in graduate school together she felt sorry she worked with uh, experimental animals on on studying nutrition and the, the effect of minerals and so on and so forth. Well, she felt sorry for these two animals and brought them home for about, I don't know, a month. And then it was more than I could handle. And so I, I said, we, we must take them back into the lab and do whatever experiment you want to do. And then we can sacrifice them. So that would be the, so, <laughs> so it was a good experiment. But what, what were they? There were two little mice, two you little know, mice. you do a lot of mouse experiments when you're doing these, uh, these kinds of studies. 
And she felt sorry for these two. I don't know. It was very bizarre. Let me tell you, it was very bizarre. <laughs> Did she name them? Were they Mickey and Minnie? Yeah, she named them, but I don't remember the names. <laughs> Our son had a, a salamander. That was different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we have some friends here. I don't know if you know um, Mike and Jamie Henschel, but um, in their barn, they had a... Um, a skunk, a small skunk. And that thing was a pet for them for what, about a month and a half or something like that. And then it finally ran off into the woods again. But it was, and they were feeding it and doing all sorts of things. It was, that was interesting, very interesting. Well, I grew up on a farm and we had uh, chickens, but I never wanted a pet chicken. That was not anything I ever wanted to have was a pet chicken, so. Mm -hmm. We had chickens for a while and I, they were very entertaining. But I, don't think, I don't think I would have been as understanding as she was if that Ermine had gotten to uh, my chickens. <laughs> Ermine, 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 the weasel, yeah. the weasel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right. Um, Did you see the uh, movie Cry Macho? You know, we wanted to see it because of Clint Eastwood, 90 years old and all that. And, and that um, young fellow with him that he's taking back from Mexico has a rooster, macho. <laughs> and he's very attached to that rooster. <laughs> I think it's easy to get attached to things you spend time with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I don't know how people can work in labs. Uh, you know, either it's something the science has to drive you, the, the the knowledge you're looking for, because I think it must be excruciatingly difficult to look at some of those experiments and not feel for the animal, because we do know much more about animals. But yeah, it must be very hard. So um, I could never volunteer at a humane society. I could not work in a lab without at least in my current state. <laughs> well, she said at, at one point, I remember I wrote it down that all placental mammals share 90 percent of yeah. our genetic material i mean mm -hmm. that's <laughs> you know so to me that means more than just physical things it's i i think some animals i think animals have emotions we just don't always know what they are but we know elephants have very strong connections and when a baby dies you know the whole the whole group herd mourns that right. that baby and, and to, other animals, hands Chimpanzees, the the ones that they've taught sign language and whatever, they they sign emotions. They're happy, they're sad, whatever. Yeah. I I did uh, research in grad school on the um, not with the animals, but but um, synthesized the look at all the research and summarized it for a big paper that I did. And it was fascinating to me that they would teach their their babies the sign language at, with no provocation to do that. And um, one of the chimps that was brought up um, totally as a, as a child in a home was introduced to chimps, um, wild chimps and uh, in a cage. And she just screamed and said, what are those? And they signed back to her, what do you think they are? And she said, they are insects. Oh, she oh called my them goodness. insects in her sign language. And then so many of the research animals were, uh, when they were done with them, they put them into zoos, yeah, um, and and they they suffered terrible depression. Many of them died. They stopped eating. It, they were just so used to being free. It was like prison to them. And of course, they have emotional lives. Chimps and gorillas, and uh, yeah. Did you ever did you ever see the Coco the gorilla? There's um, some videos yeah. of her with Mr. Rogers. And also yeah. with um, Williams, what's his first name? Uh, the Robin, comedian. Williams. Robin Williams. They both went to see her, and it's it's just the most touching thing to watch her with them. And they um, they gave her a kitten. She she wanted she signed she wanted a kitten. She wanted a pet, mm -hmm. and they were so afraid. You, you so most of you know about all this, right? So they were so afraid that she might kill the kitten and they were very reluctant, but she kept saying, I want one of those, I want a kitten. And they gave it to her and she just 
held it and nurtured it and cared for it and it got killed and she just mourned forever and had to get her another one it ran out in the road or something but um yeah i mean animals have especially the primates have certainly have emotional lives and i know my dogs have emotional lives that are very they're each very different one from the other too so uh i just don't know how anybody can question that so ridiculous was this, the book where she, was this the book where she um, was as a little girl wanted to be a horse and so she acted like a horse for a long yeah. time? Yeah. 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 Well, I, I had I had a friend in grade school. I thought I was reading about her. It was Becky. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they every recess, she and this other friend, they would just run around the playground and whinny at people and and you know go up like this. I mean, it was hysterical. That went on for oh gosh, probably a couple of years. And then, and then she finally got a horse, you know, her parents got her a horse. So. Her parents gave in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, oh gosh, I guess Becky wasn't the only one that thought she was a horse. <laughs> you know, with your question about an animal, it wasn't a pet, but I'm thinking about this last spring, I guess it was, and there is a mom deer, and Karen can relate to this. Karen lives in our neighborhood. And she came through the easement. And I see this fawn coming up into our backyard. And the mom stayed in the easement. And the fawn keeps coming up into our backyard and looks over at the mom, who's still way over here, and finds a spot to lay down. And the mom makes sure that she laid down. And then she goes on down the easement. And and the fawn knows to stay there and knows that mom's going to come back and find her. And I think, I always think, how do they do that? How, how do they communicate that to their children? Um, you, and she, you, mom, you know, you, do you know why they do that? Because of coyotes. They know that if they leave them in your yard, yeah. that you're not going to go right. after it. But that's, that's what I've always right. heard. In Right, but that's what I mean. How do they know yeah. and communicate? There's something going on there that is amazing that we don't that we don't know about. Yeah. In, in the city, in the towns where there are more fence yards, the, the deer will jump the fence and to give birth, give birth to the fawn inside a fenced yard, because the fawn can't get out. <laughs> they jump out to feed and then come back. Until in, until the fawn is old enough to jump the fence, and then or tear it down. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We we've well, seen yeah. that we've seen that in Milwaukee several several times in friends' yards. Um, she had that brief encounter on Christmas with the weasel, but it it really made her make some realizations and actually kind of give a forgiveness towards her mother. Did anyone have any, any, what's that? <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't, I didn't, yeah. I the same too much. I wasn't into that connection, no. <laughs> so she thought her mother was a weasel? Is that? Uh... <laughs> yeah. Bloodthirsty one of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just seems to me that she was making lots of connections here and, and maybe, exploring these chests some of these you know the extremes of emotions and the depth of her bereavement over animals mm -hmm. it seems to me and like jane mentioned yeah. that maybe she's just processing a I, lot exactly. of this and it's a very short book i suspect she could have written it much longer one but i it um it seems to me that she's doing a lot of processing and i'm it Mm -hmm. In some ways, it seems high time she did it, but um, <laughs> the, the weasel is such a serious predator, difficult. That it's hard to like weasels. That's why we have so many negative uh, associations with the word connotations to the word weasel. Mm -hmm. But they are incredible creatures, and you know. So, in that sense, I I could see that it, the devastation the weasel caused. The devastation that her mother caused yeah. you know she's forgiving the weasels for killing her chickens maybe it's time to forgive her mother for killing part of who she was or you know i i could i could see it i i, I could see more of that but it, i think the book is so short maybe too short to 
you know, justify her journey where she ends at the end. But I don't. But I agree with everybody who said it couldn't be much longer in this right. in this in this way. Yeah, you know, in the way it's written, in the way it's illustrated. But it's, it seems to me this is how she processed who she is, where she came from, what what has happened in her life. I, this seems like a. That's why it's a memoir, I think. But. Um, I had less trouble with the weasel realization because I think her folks were incredibly, what, cruel, cruel. Um, unkind, an unthinking, you know, narrow-minded. She's a better woman than I. That's yeah. why I couldn't yeah. reach. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not as good as she was about reaching and saying, "Well, okay, I understand. Maybe my mother had reasons." Yeah, but you, the, know. you know, so I don't know. I I had trouble with some of the others, but. Um, I thought the weasel was interesting because it's hard. Weasels are top of the line. <laughs> Predators, <laughs> they are good at what they do. <laughs> was this her first book? Was this her first oh, book? No. Oh, no. no. Because I haven't read no. any others and I really, at this point, I, I don't know that I would, but <laughs> I just wondered where this was in her, her scheme of, of writing. Yeah, this is actually more recent. This one is 2018, and she's got quite a few others. Uh, she's got one that just came out called The Hummingbird's Gift. I read that. I just read it. Just read it. Yeah, it's um, it's much of the same. You mm -hmm. have to really want to read about hummingbirds mm -hmm. to read a whole book of that. They, um, she and her friend brought um, rescued two. I mean, hummingbird babies are the size of jelly beans, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> um, wow. and they weigh less than a penny. So she, they had to save them. They were orphaned. Huh. So if you think about feeding and saving something that's small, and again, she takes lessons from it, perseverance of fear, flight, and things like that. Um, and it is a small book. She treats it, I think, you know, in a small way. It would, it could almost be like a favorite story of somebody, you know, it's a, it's a small one. I, I don't know. I don't recommend it, especially. But her, her well-known one is the octopus yeah. one. And it was a, uh, yeah, the, a couple more well-known books, especially if you like the octopus section, there's The Soul of an Octopus. That one I had heard of. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this one also has been well-received, The Good Good Pig. So this mm -hmm. is all about Christopher Hogwood. <laughs> The book is about is about Christopher Hogwood. So this one's kind of fun too. Uh, she does have after she wrote How to Be a Good Creature, she's got Becoming a Good Creature. And for those of you that were looking for lessons, this is more uh, towards children, of course. But it's um, you know respect others, don't be afraid. So it's, she's kind of taken some of what she learned in, in writing How to Be a Good Creature and made it more of a picture book. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Was was anybody else put off by her I don't want to, to belittle her but um or, she just the the privilege that she could travel the world that she could go off on this expedition and that expedition and you know study this creature and that creature it just I, I guess it just it was a little off-putting to me that, you know, maybe maybe I should just look at it as a, you know, a really interesting life and be glad that she could bring us along in those um, experiences. But it, it, how did how did other? It, she was a little hard for me to like. I think that's when when I read a memoir, I really want to like the author, and and. I, oh, I, I don't know. I'm curious what other people think. And did you feel that she didn't appreciate or didn't recognize the how fortunate she was to be able to do that? Or I don't. Is that what you felt? No, no. I just it, it was she. She kind of would make us like early on. You know, I my father, my parents disowned me, but I went and did this and. You know, I mean, it, it took money and privilege to be able to do those things she did. And so did she want us to feel sorry for her? Did she not? I, I, I just, I, I, I don't understand. I she just, go ahead. I don't, I don't understand exactly why her parents disowned her. They didn't like her choice of husband. Was that it? He wasn't, and they never came, they didn't come to the wedding or. 
Yeah. 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 in the army. I, 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 I can't remember exactly, but yeah, there was some, some really deep, deep, strange, you know, deeply strange things there. But I, I think she was, she expressed gratitude at the privilege of her life at every turn. And the irony was that the, her father bought her the first ticket for her to go travel to, to Australia. In Australia. That was a gift to her from her father with the airline date. So that was kind of surprising. I don't think she's quite figured out all of those little pieces in her life yet, what all that is about, how that all fits together. I think she just kind of laid it out there. It's kind of, you know, how do I know what I think or feel until I see what I say? <laughs> kind of thing, like journaling. She was maybe, almost journaling. Maybe that's my it. bigger, maybe that's my bigger question in this is. Um, which memoirs are worth writing and which ones aren't? You know, I mean, it's true. That's that's right. kind yeah. of the bigger question. I, I think so, she's a great uh, children's book writer, and I think she took that. It seemed to me she took. I mean, because I, I would read, I, I would use any of her books about nature with with children and young adults. I mean, I think they'd be wonderful. But I think she took that whole style and format and put it into this really deep um, psychological memoir, which was an odd juxtaposition of the writing style with all of this hurt. I just found that very odd, but, but fascinating in a way of this is how she was working her stuff out. So I, I was intrigued by it. I didn't think it was great writing, but I was intrigued by her so, and her, her life and her situation and had a lot of empathy for what she was going through still in her life. I think I was thinking, I think, I was thinking I think, that, that that maybe she needed to talk to someone like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I think it's worthwhile for anyone to write a memoir if it's going to help them. And the thing is, it's the publisher who's deciding to you know publish these things. It's it's like when we talked about the book about the um, what the family in Mexico. You know, who's the family got killed, and we, know, and we talked about the idea that the, the author wrote this book because she had a need or she felt like she wanted to write this story, but it was the publisher who decided, yeah, we're going to publish this. It so to me, it's valuable if it's something that that is worthwhile to you or or, or to help you figure out your life or whatever. Um, but we can't blame. Cy Montgomery for having the book on <laughs> in the bookstore. Someone said, okay, it's worth publishing. Let's sell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do you think do you think that she has very many real people friends, or is it mostly animals for her? Yeah, I don't I don't think I would probably spend a lot of time with Cy, is what it amounts to. I think I'd find her interesting, but I, I think she chooses you know, the animal life way more than the people life. I, I, I feel she probably has a couple friends, but they are probably also in animal people. Like, her. Yeah. like she yeah. talked about the walks with the other yeah. friends that had yeah. was it poodles or something. And, you know, so I think, yeah. I think she seeks out like-minded people. Yeah. And we all do. We all do. And, 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 and it, is her life. it is her livelihood. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, this is what she does for a living. And so she has to do it. She does it well. She she does a great job of making a tarantula approachable for mm -hmm. the rest of us, mm -hmm. or uh, a, forgiving a weasel for his um, native ability to kill. Um, it, I think she does a remarkable job of engaging us with animals that we don't have a lot of knowledge about, um, and her personal contact with them. Um, but it is it is her livelihood and I would bet, and then she spends time with those other scientists in the wild. So I, I would bet some of them may be more friends than not friends, but maybe because they're scattered, they don't spend a lot of time together. Um, I don't but, know. I, when, the, I would bet it, when the pig and the dog died, you know, right one after the other, and she became so depressed, it occurred to me and, I, and, I, and I'd forgotten that I was thinking about that at the time, but it, I just remembered, that I, maybe she was so bereft because that was her relationship to the neighbors in the community. 
And when they were gone, there was no reason for those neighbors to come by. I, I think I think there was a whole huge gap in their life in terms of social interaction when those two animals died. That pig brought everybody in the neighborhood over to her. And it was a way for her to connect. It was the the the, the thread that connected her to people. So I, you know, maybe that was part of the depression. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the kids would all come to play with the big giant pig. And, yeah. yeah. And she really be, became very attached to that family next door and those two girls. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I'd still like to have dinner with her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I find people fascinating just in general. I like having dinner with all of you, you know. But I, 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 I would love to have a dinner with her and, and feel her out. And, it, and just, was, just listen. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I feel differently because I listened. She read her own book and I listened to it as an audiobook. And she read it. So I feel I know her a little bit. It was her voice, literally. Mm -hmm. Did anyone watch the video that Tracy suggested in the email she sent us? Because she was she was interesting to listen to and watch the yes, video. So. She, seemed like a, she seemed like a very enthusiastic, fun person. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think she'd be interesting to spend time with. I you know, I, I really do. I think she knows a lot and she presents a lot and she's absorbed a lot. I think she'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to laugh to myself because I watched the video and you talked about all the time she spent with these animals. If you looked at the books behind her, she hadn't straightened those out for years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that right away. I thought, oh boy, she's out playing with the dog because she's not straightening her books. <laughs> well, she's got her priorities straight, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> Well, yeah, you know what they say, you can sort your books in the home. <laughs> did they say that? Yeah, yeah no, you, you can dust. I can do that when I'm in the home. I, I don't need to do it now. Oh, in the home. In the okay. home. In, the, okay. home. in yeah. the home. I don't after need to they, do it now. After they me to the home. I can do it when you know, my son puts me in the home and I can do those things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this was kind of a, a different pick for a book club pick. Mm -hmm. And as, as many of you expressed, I mean, maybe not something you would have read had it not been for the book club, but was there, was it a good selection? Was there enough to it to read and to think about? Well, this I always a good like a book when you learn a little bit of something. And, and I think I learned things about the octopus and all those animals that I never, ever heard of before. So as long as I'm learning a few things as I'm going along, I'm, I'm thinking that's that's a good thing. So I was happy with, with that part of it. Well, and, and as many people said, I think it was a good book for the month because it's a busy, busy month. And it was a little break in a more serious, you know, in more serious reading uh, from other months. And mm -hmm. that's true. Um, so Tracy, how did you uh, come to pick this book? This was a selection of, um, let's see, our summer reading program had to do with animals. And one of the libraries picked this as their all county read. Oh. Mm -hmm. wow. Which I thought was an interesting pick for yeah. an entire- For a yeah. county read, wow. <laughs> it would be interesting to see what people thought about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I bet this was a very strange book for most people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now she's been nominated for the National Book Award, right? Was it she this book? She, she, was, a fine, she, she was a finalist for this. Oh, for the, the octopus, octopus one. Octopus. Yeah, the octopus yeah. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she is a respected author and, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with her material. Mm -hmm. I found it interesting that we've been sort of moving along a path of uh, it, maybe every other month, every third month with psychological books about <laughs> psychological uh, difficulties <laughs> over the past couple of years, what, 18 months or something. Maybe, I don't know if there's a trend here, but, um, but you know, because we, we have related this to 
some of her coming to terms with things. Sure. And then we mm -hmm. just saw we felt furiously happy. Mm -hmm. We had um, the Let's Talk. The and then we had the graphic novel um, a year ago about, um, oh, can we talk about something more pleasant? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, there's all of these yeah. issues and, and oh, here we are. <laughs> We're reading, but we're in therapy at the yeah, same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I read Anxious People. I am just like, oh, yes. Yes. I think it's I think it's worthwhile. It was worthwhile reading, um, but only because of the discussion. Because I always get a little bit more out of the book Absolutely. because of the discussion we have. So that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did anyone like her writing enough or like some of the character or the, the animals enough to want to read some of her other other books? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not I right really, away. I really liked, not right away. Not right away, Tracy. <laughs> I really liked her, her uh, list of books for further reading at the mm -hmm. end, which are by other people. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, some of those sound really interesting. So mm -hmm. that was nice of her to give us that list. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes me want to see the octopus documentary. It's very good. Um, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say I am not a big fan of spiders. So when I got to the tarantula chapter, I, I made sure, look, I opened up right to it. I made sure <laughs> I read that during the day and not right before bed to save my husband having to, you know, wake up in the middle of the night with me. But then after I read it, I was like, okay, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. So maybe it'll so maybe it'll help me with my spiders. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, pink toes. Pink toes, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's not pink. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think Any it other just thoughts? points out that the world is fascinating. We just have that to take time to look at it. The world is fascinating. <laughs> that it is, yes. My son has a love of animals. So we learn about oh. pangolins and all kinds of creatures we had never heard of a few years yes. ago. So that's that's she been fun. James Lang. Mm -hmm. Do that. They'll get a kick out of that. My my nephew got married up in Minneapolis and um, they were gonna have a special guest come to the wedding and um, they had it, the reception was at the zoo. So the special guest was a, a penguin. And so they brought it in, you know, the trainers brought it in and we could all touch it and, you know, watch what it was doing. And, you know, so yeah, penguins are good. That's why we're not blown away by this book at all. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember when Southwest Airlines had the penguin as the mascot? Do you remember that? We had the great good fortune of one time riding on a Southwest Airlines flight um, from San Diego. And so at SeaWorld was the, was the co-partner with, with um, Southwest Airlines. And the handler bought a penguin on the flight. So we had a penguin with us on our Southwest flight. And it was the most adorable thing running up and down the aisle. And saying hello to yeah. everybody. Oh, it was, a, it was the best flight I've ever taken. <laughs> no, in in my neighborhood, the the park Chicago Park District Fieldhouse in my neighborhood has started having bunny yoga. Oh my gosh! In, in concert with the uh, Red Door Animal Shelter, which is just down the block from this park, mm. uh, and bunnies are most of their clients. <laughs> they have bunny spa days. Anyway, they're talking about this bunny yoga class, and I'm thinking to myself. What about the droppings? What is what is going on here? And so that's all I can't tell you anything more about it except that they were extolling the virtues of it on the oh, Facebook page. Yeah, but but wow. money, money droppings are easy. They look like little pieces of kibble. Just ask my dog. Okay, <laughs> bye. Yeah. Better than uh, goat yoga. You've heard of goat yoga. Yeah. Right? No. You know, I we we used to um, pet sit for a rabbit. Um, hooligan, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> yeah, they they can be um, house trained, um, mm -hmm. bro house broken. Oh my God. So they once you they have to find the spot they want to go, and once they once that's their spot, then then that's where you put stuff to mm -hmm. take care of what yeah. they want to do. 
And you do yeah. have to put things out for them to chew because they are, mm -hmm. um, they have to chew a lot to keep, keep those teeth under control. But they, they made wonderful chew. pets. They would come, it would, the hooligan would rush to greet us <laughs> and then, you know, be standoffish if we weren't yep. quick enough with the food. And um, yep. it was a cute little thing. It, it, so rabbits make, bunnies can make good pets, not wild ones. There's no taming a wild rabbit. They don't do well. But the domesticated ones. Right, yeah. yeah. I have a friend that has two or three rabbits in her house, and she has kitty litter. It's just like a, a cat. It's amazing. Yeah. And they yeah. greet her when she comes home. She loves them. I have yeah. a friend, friend that had one of those giant, really giant rabbits, you know, yeah. those, those giant 20, 30 pounds, you know, really, really big. And they taught him to use a doggy door. They lived on a third floor walk up in San Francisco, and they taught him to use the back wood fire escape stairs to go down to their little posted stamp yard and come right back up again. I, I it was just amazing. If we, if we keep this up, we keep this up, I'm going to be picturing the killer rabbits from Monty yeah. Python. Oh, no. <laughs> so might be time to just move on to truck. <laughs> Some, somebody mentioned the movie Arachnophobia. It's hilariously funny with John Goodman. If you haven't seen it, it's just really a hoot. If the spiders don't creep you out, but it's it's very, I think it's Tracy very funny. It, Tracy. It's a very funny movie. I think Tracy's a serious case here. She's no, not going for no, it. that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. No. Um, so yeah, we you mentioned truck. That is our next next meeting i don't have the date in front of me but the first yes. wednesday right. uh michael perry's coming back he will be here um it's like the second second yeah second. yeah i don't i didn't i didn't prepare enough to have the paperwork with me but um oh, yeah. send you the second i think second of february we'll be here if anybody wants to see him in person or there will be a virtual option so whatever whatever works oh, for you in our book club not at our book club no, no. But oh, at, yeah. the, at the auditorium, at the auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday, February, Saturday the 5th. Saturday, yeah. February 5th. Which I think is right, that'll be right after our discussion here right. on that Wednesday. Yeah. Because yeah. he was in the club earlier. I know. He was uh, just delightful when he was at our book club. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts, comments, questions? Thank you, as always, Tracy. Yes. Good Thank discussion. Thank you very much. Tracy. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> nice to see everybody. <laughs> everybody. Thank right. you. Yes, Thank stay you well. Stay healthy. Thank, Thank you, Tracy. You love this group. Bye. 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 See you next month, if not before. Fun. That was fun.